here's where I want to use a little bit of preaching liberty. I imagine that the decision to send David was not that quick or simple. There must have been naysayers. There must have been whispering. There must have been grumbling, complaining, and arguments. And what about his brothers? Did they stand idly by? I mean, they may have been jealous of him, but this wasn't a Joseph situation either. They didn't want to see him get killed. Maybe there was a conversation like this. Um, King, can I, can I have a word with my brother? It won't just take but just a moment, sir. Yes, sir, I understand the gravity of the situation, but just a word. David, have you lost your mind, man? What's wrong with you? You didn't get enough sleep out there with the sheep? Have you seen Goliath? This isn't a game anymore. Look, I was a little upset with you a bit ago, but I'm over that now. As your older brother, you gotta listen to me. What am I supposed to tell Dad? Oh, no big deal, Dad. We just served up David on a platter. We knew you wouldn't mind. Look, you and I used to play army and soldiers and warriors back in the day. We take out sticks and beat each other with them, but those days are over. This is the real deal now. You can't just walk in here and think you're gonna slay Goliath with your walking stick, bro. We'll feed it to you for lunch. Look, you just need to go home. Get your stuff and get out of here. You'll be gone before they finish arguing, and I'll just tell them that Dad came to get you something. Just go home. And the thing about that is that if a conversation like that really took place, Eliab would have been right. I mean, logically speaking, he's making a lot of sense. This was a suicide mission, and everyone knew it. Well, everyone but David, that is. Now, the story gets interesting from here, and it's really what I want to focus on. Pick up at verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk in these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Even though everyone there believed David would be turned into Swiss cheese, they made a decision to send him. Apparently, Saul wanted to give him a fighting chance, or at least enough time to repent of his sins, and maybe the armor would spare his life for enough seconds to let him say his last prayers. David tried the armor on, then started on his way, but quickly realized this was not going to work. He turned back to Saul and told him, I cannot wear these. I have not tested them. And here's where I want to pause for a moment. What exactly does that mean? Is David saying that he has never worn armor, or at least that particular armor? Is he suggesting that he has tr hasn't trained with body protection and that to wear it would hinder him? Well, it would certainly be logical to come to that conclusion. And I think it's a correct conclusion. Think about the new things that you've had to use in your life. There's always been a learning curve with something new. Unfamiliarity keeps us from giving our best because we hesitate. David is going to fight a giant of a man, clad in seemingly impenetrable armor. The last thing he needs is to trip over his boots and land face down, unable to move. But I think there's more to this statement than a quick cursory reading provides. I imagine that when Saul offered his armor, everyone in the room was in agreement. And if Eliab had been there, he would have voiced with the choir. Look, David, you can't go out like you are. This is war we are talking about here. What you brought, brought back with you, back home, with the sheep and the wolves, but you aren't home anymore. We are facing the most sophisticated army yet, with the newest, greatest, and latest battle weapon and gear we have seen to date. Seriously, even the armor we are giving you is substandard as compared to what Goliath is bringing with him. There is no way that your old tactics are going to work. There's no way that your simple weapons are going to even make a dent. Honestly, David, what we really need is one of those. We need another giant weapon like Goliath. But in that, we don't have that technology. The best we can provide you is this. You have to wear this or you're dead meat. Does that sound familiar? Have you ever heard that before? As I listen to my dad talk about evangelism and soul winning, it strikes me that this line of reasoning 
is the very same thing that people are saying today.